Hi friends, welcome back to this series of videos on how to utilize a lot of features and a lot of shortcuts in Microsoft Word to type equations and mathematical documents like this in a very efficient way. Today we're going to cover a very, very important topic, which is how to cross-reference equations. For example, I have a number of equations in my document and I want to write a statement so that I cross-reference the first equation like this. Now remember, so far we have already covered how to create these automatic numbered equations. We have created a shortcut on how to call these equations out. So for example, if I hit the keyboard shortcut this way, you see that I already have have a list of templates that I immediately can call out and then I can type new equations in here one at a time. And it is important for you to know how to do this first before we talk about how do we cross reference these equations because this is set up in a way not only they are automatically in sequence, but also let's say if I rearrange my equation order, for example, if I drag this one before the first one and drag this one uh, up here and I want to drag this one all the way down here. Now clearly the order as you can see is all messed up and we can select everything and use F9 basically function F9 to refresh the page and you see that all the numberings is back in sequence and not only that you see that the equations E equals mc squared that I was referring over here automatically updates from originally equation number one to equation number three. So this is a very important thing to uh, know how to do in any math documents or any science documents that involve equations. So first of all, if you don't know how to set up this numbered equations using field codes, as you can see, it's grayed out a little bit over here. If you don't know how to do that yet, please make sure you check out the video I have down in the links below on how to set that up. Now in this video, we'll talk about how to cross reference these equations that you have just set up. So in order to learn how to do this, these two steps are actually exactly the same as how you would do it in LaTeX. So if anyone is familiar with LaTeX already, you will know these two steps well. So the first step is you need to find the equation that you want to potentially reference later and give it a label. So in LaTeX, it's called a label and in Word, it's called a bookmark. So we'll create a bookmark for the equation and then later at the place that you want to reference that equation, you just have to cross reference it. Now in LaTeX, it's called site and in Word, it's just called cross reference. So we'll cover these two steps. And at the end of this video, I'll also show you some shortcuts that I use so that I don't have to click through the menu items every time and I just use my keyboard shortcuts to create both the bookmark and the cross-referencing. So let's go back up here and let's start from the beginning. So let's say I want to reference this equation later on. First thing you need to do is select a number over here because this is the number that you want to call out later. So you want to highlight that like this, but make sure this is a field code. So when you see it, when I put my cursor next any of these, in fact, you see that the number itself is grayed out and it is not just a static number, but a field code. So the first step you want to do is to create a bookmark of this number over here. So we'll highlight it and then go to insert bookmark over here. What I like to do is usually follow a similar convention in LaTeX, which uh, if I want to reference equations, I'll start all of them like this. And for example, I'll put equation one, which is E equals MC squared or something like that. Notice you are not allowed to put any other symbols other than underscore or a very limited amount. So you see at the moment it's allowing me to add. And uh, if I, as soon as I put an equal sign like this, you see this disappears. You cannot put any uh, symbols that are too fancy like this over here. So I will just keep it like this. Unfortunately, it doesn't come back up, but it, it does register if I hit enter. Another tip is sometimes people would just put equation like this. I like to do, give it roughly the, the place where my equation is at. Now I know very well that if I rearrange my equations, this numbering is not going to match up and it's not going to change. However, when I have a document of hundreds of equations, which I can show you later on at the end of this video, it is difficult to find where my equations are when I have hundreds of bookmarks over here. But, but a lot of times when I want to reference the equation, I would roughly know where in the document, in the context of my whole either lecture notes or document or my, or my textbook, uh, roughly where it is, and I can scroll down, which I'll show you in a second an example. I have at the end of this video. So for now, um, it's up to you. Uh, most people, a lot of convention people would just put equation and then put in some sort of description over here. I like to put in also um, a relative number here. So even though if I rearrange these numbers later on, it's going to change, but it's only be in the vicinity. It shouldn't be too far off. Anyway, so since I've have tampled with putting in weird symbols over here, the add button is gone, but fear not. All you have to do is uh, hit enter like that and it should be registered. We can double check that by um, going to insert bookmark like this and you see the one original lay there is that I just created it is there. It's not gone. So that's the first step. And secondly, let me delete this. And now you type out whatever paragraphs or sentences you have until the point where over here I want to reference this equation. So now you want to do cross reference. So this is the second step. So you at the right point, you just need to click insert cross reference. It will bring this dialog box up and all you have to do is find bookmark over here and you'll see the one 
bookmark you just created. You have here now the option of what to insert. So you can insert um, the page number that this bookmark is on. So in this case, if I select this option, it will just reference one and not that number. You can have the options of selecting the paragraph number or whether it's above or below the point where you are referencing. And uh, there's a subtlety of paragraph number with context or no context. Um, we won't go into those right now. So for now, for us, we just really want to call out the number three, the equation number three. So we're going to uh, select bookmark text because that's what we have bookmarked. We have bookmarked exactly this three. In fact, we bookmarked a field code, so it actually will change. Now you also have the option of whether you want to have this as a hyperlink. It's uh, generally usually a good idea unless you don't want it. And so later on, when you click the number, it will bring your cursor uh, to that page and actually at that location as well. And if you generate a PDF out of this, you will also preserve all the hyperlinks. So that's generally a good idea. So once you have created a lot of bookmarks, if you have a lot of equations, select the one you want and click insert. As simple as that. It's actually hidden behind over here. So you see I have that. So now I can close the box. If you have accidentally clicked it twice, you see, um, or three times like this, you, you see it will start inserting more and more uh, right one after another. But these are individual cross-reference. Uh, I think I have a bit of redundancy here, so I'll just delete these. So you do see that this is actually not just a number it has inserted, but you see it's grayed out. So it's actually a field code on its own. In fact, if you like, you can actually use command F9 and then type out this code with reference and then that means cross-referencing and then you can type out uh, the bookmark name if you remember it and this is an uh, optional switch you can put in or not it's up to you and that slash H just tells me that uh, this field code is now a hyperlink as well so if I do remove this it will also remove the hyperlink so we'll keep everything as it is and just uh, hit uh, function F9 again and uh, to recompile that back into itself that's done and that's basically done that's as simple as it is so let's double check if everything works well so let's drag this all the way in front like this and we see that now this is not in order so all I have to do is select everything and including this you see it's a dynamical feature and hit F9 function F9 and you see uh, only all the numberings now are in chronological order but also all the referencings will change of course this can be anywhere uh, it doesn't have to be over there and I can let's do one more test if I drag it down over here so this should now be equation number four if I refresh everything I can also do it one at a time and I can just do F9 for this like this um, and you see as soon as that is updated, I can put my cursor just in front of here or highlight this one and do F9 like this. Um, of course, it looks a little bit odd because I haven't updated the whole document, so let's do that. So let me show you a real life document that I have typed out in the past and show you how the bookmarks work when I have a lot of equations in the document. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you the shortcuts on how to call up these bookmarks and cross-referencing to speed up your workflow. But first, uh, let's uh, look at, I have around 40 pages of document over here, and there should be around hundreds of uh, equations. So to find those, we can go to insert bookmark again. And uh, as you can see, these are from equation zero all the way to equation, um, yeah, like 140 equations like this. So let's go to one of these. Um, in fact, you can use the bookmark dialog box. You, not only you can add bookmarks as we talked about, you can delete ones if you've created unnecessary ones. You can also go to the location of that equation. So for example, if I select this and I hit go to, so you see I have, uh, yeah, it brings me to this equation. Notice when I wrote this equation, it was equation number 140, but now it has become equation 142. So I probably inserted uh, two equations in front of this. So the reason why I still do this is it roughly preserves um, the, the order of where the equations are relative to one another. So when I have a long document like this, so if I close this, for example, down here, let's say I want to reference this equation and or even a bit further down, and then I suddenly want to reference uh, this equation. Now, let's say I forgot what I called it in my bookmark. Let's say I forgot the bookmark name that I have given it, right? So it will be further down the, equa the, the document and somewhere over here, let's say I want to reference equation and uh, I forgot a bookmark, right? So if I go to insert cross-reference like this, and uh, I hit, let me put this on the side, and I, if I yeah, go to bookmark, and if I forgot a name, it'll be difficult to find, um, unless you are naming them in a very good way, so I tend to forget. But however, I, I roughly remember where it is because at the back I see, all right, so I am in around equation 150 over here, so the one that I want to reference on top should be around 142. Let me move this to the side, around 142. So I will look for somewhere around 140 things, and I don't, usually bookmark every single one. Uh, I only bookmark by necessity when I need to refer it later on. So this is a little bit different with the convention in later where it is convenient to, or it's conventional at least, to bookmark all the equations, at least the way I do it. Uh, but here, I will only create the bookmarks that I need. Right, so I'll go to around 142 and then now it limits my choice, sort of narrow down into these options. And I know that uh, this equation I want to refer to is the vial uh, decomposition of uh, these Dirac spinners. Right, so now I can click insert. Yeah, this is the point where I was typing, right? So it brings me, so it brings us back down here. So this is basically how I use bookmark and cross-referencing. I'll also show you the shortcuts I use to create the bookmark and also create the cross-referencing over here because you would find yourself doing this a lot if you type a lot of uh, math documents like this. 
So let's say I want to bookmark this. The shortcut I created is, I don't know if that's built in or I created it, but it's command option B and command option C to cross reference. So let me type it out here for your reference. So it's command option B for creating a bookmark and command option C for cross referencing. So let's see how this works. If I want to reference this equation, so I'll go here and highlight this. So once I've selected this, I'll do command option B and this will call out my bookmark and I can give it a name, for example, what equation 149, uh, test. Let's just do this and add. So now I have a new bookmark and it takes a while to load when it has a lot of equations here. So if I want another equation over here, right, so I'll do command option C like this and it brings up the cross-referencing dialog and I can scroll down to equation 149 test and insert, close like that. So because I have created everything with hyperlinks, you see that if I click this, it actually brings my cursor right up back to this point. And if I click 142, it also brings my cursor right up to this point. So it, these hyperlinks are also preserved if you create a PDF out of this. So finally, if you want to double check if you have the same shortcuts or if you don't have these same shortcuts and you want to create your own, um, you can go to Tools, Custom My Keyboard, or Command Exclamation Mark. And then in Categories, go to All Commands and type Bookmark. So uh, edit bookmark over here, you see there's actually a couple, I think some of them are default and some of them I just made it easier to remember, but this is the one I use. I'm not gonna remove it, but if you don't have it, basically you can type this on here and assign it. Um, this is the same, so I won't overwrite it. And finally, uh, if you type cross-reference or just um, cross, <laughs> and uh, you'll see this option over here and I've assigned command option C over here. So you can double check if you have the same settings in your own Word, and if not, feel free to use the same setting. I find this the most convenient of all. Okay, that's all I have for you today, and hopefully you find this useful, as cross-referencing equations is such a big part of typing math documents. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a like on the bottom below, and also remember to subscribe to the channel so it encourages me to make more videos. If you find anything unclear in this video, or if you've seen anything that I've typed that you're interested to learn how to do that efficiently, or set those up efficiently, please feel free to let me know in the comments below as well, and I can potentially make a video about it in the future. And as a result, if you haven't already, remember to turn on the notification bell next to the subscribe button as well once you subscribe so that if the video comes out, you'll be the first to get notified of that video. Thank you for your support and hope to see you in the next video.